Republican lawmakers were forced to listen to their own comments about health care they could not genuinely expect to be taken seriously by anybody, much less Democrats. And in our fourth story in the countdown, there are new hints now that finally seeing the madness of the Republican context that surrounds them, Democrats will be prepared to go this alone. A new smorgasbord of GOP excuses and hominahominas on health care, none more ludicrous than the circular logic of Senator Chuck Grassley, asked why he said, quote, we should not have a government plan that will pull a plug on grandma. I said that because two reasons. Number one, I was responding to a question at my town meetings. I let my constituents set the agenda. A person that asked me that question was reading from language that they got off of the Internet. It scared my uh, constituents. And the, lang the specific language I used was language that the president had used at Portsmouth. Uh, of course, the president had used that language to rebut those like Grassley and Palin, who had made such, the, such an outrageous claim in the first place. Grassley basically admitted that he was enabling the fear of his constituents instead of puncturing the misconception with facts. When asked again if the House legislation would pull the plug on grandma, he said, quote, it won't do that. I know the Pelosi bill doesn't intend to do that, but that's where it leads people to. Uh huh. Senator John McCain, meantime, defended Sarah Palin's claim that Obama's bill would create death panels, quoting, look, I don't think they were, quote, death panels, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but on the best treatment procedures part of the bill, it does open it up to decisions being made as far that should be left, those choices left to the patient and the individual. Both McCain and Senator Orrin Hatch separately suggested that bipartisanship would be in full flower if Senator Ted Kennedy had not been absent from the debate. Then there was Senator Joe Lieberman raising the moral imperative here just to shoot the thing down. Morally, every one of us would like to cover every American with health insurance. But that's where you spend most of the trillion dollars uh, plus. And I'm afraid we've got to think about putting a lot of that off uh, until the economy's out of recession. There's no, there's no reason we have to do it all now. Who will think of the bankers? Won't somebody think of the bankers? With the insanity of all this just beginning to sink in, Senator Chuck Schumer claims that Democrats do have 60 Senate votes for a health care plan that includes the public option, and that if not, his party is now prepared to use the filibuster-proof reconciliation process to get a bill to the president. Let's turn now to Huffington Post contributor, MSNBC political analyst, Lawrence O'Donnell. Good evening, sir. Good to be here, Keith. Have Democrats finally figured out they're negotiating with and arguing against madmen? Have we seen something of a, a sea change as of tonight? Well, Keith, we like to call that shadow boxing in the Senate. We don't, we don't use that. That phrase, negotiating with madmen, never comes up. But you do, at a certain point in these proceedings, realize that you've been shadow boxing, which is to say there's really no one there on the other side, and, and you've really been negotiating with yourself. That's apparently what's ended up here. Uh, when I used to be part of these negotiations in the Finance Committee when I worked there, you could watch Republicans slip away from us over time. That's what's happening here. Even, even Republicans of goodwill who tried to be with you in the beginning. The party uh, pressure, they start to feel it, especially on recesses, as you saw with Chuck Grassley, and they drift away. And it's very clear to, to Democrats now that that is what has happened. Senator Schumer suggested a reconciliation if uh, the Democrats don't have the 60 Senate votes. Various administration officials indicated that the president's patience with Republicans is not endless, might only last a couple more millennia. Is there a cogent strategy right now to do this without Republicans or not? In a word, no. Mm, right. uh, if there had been a strategy to do this without Republicans, they would have done it in July. That was their schedule. They couldn't. Uh, they let Max Baucus continue his negotiations with Republicans because they knew they didn't have enough Democratic votes. They knew they did not have 50 Democratic votes for the public option at that time. Never mind the 60 they would need, even within the reconciliation process, in order, in order to override certain Senate rules to keep elements of the bill within reconciliation. So they don't have that. They know they don't have that, and that's why the negotiations have continued. We've heard everything so far. We've heard Grassley contradicting Grassley and, and blaming Obama for it. We've heard about death panels. We'll get to the introduction of the death book um, later on. There's probably death spam somewhere being being introduced by um, the Republicans. But I, I, uh, for sheer egregiousness, the two senators invoking Ted Kennedy's name into this, I'd like your reaction to that. 
Well, this is kind of shocking. Orrin Hatch and John McCain both saying that if Ted Kennedy were here, we would have a deal. They would be able to work out a deal with him. This strikes me as them both just trying to portray themselves as reasonable men who could do business with another reasonable man. Uh, they, uh, they both voted against. They've already voted on this. They voted against the Kennedy bill in the Kennedy committee, in the uh, Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee. They've had a bill. They voted against it. That bill was conceived of by Chairman Kennedy. He wasn't there at the time of the votes. Chris Dodd was there getting it through the committee for Chairman Kennedy. Chairman made his wishes known very clearly. John McCain, a member of the committee, Orrin Hatch, a member of the committee, could have tried to work with Senator Kennedy at the beginning, and they rejected that possibility. Fifteen years ago, Orrin Hatch was also on both the Kennedy Committee and the Senate Finance Committee was where I was working. He voted against the Kennedy bill that came through the Kennedy Committee then. He then personally complained Complained to me about how ugly and partisan the process was run by Senator Kennedy in Senator Kennedy's committee, and he was hoping that we would do a more bipartisan process in the Finance Committee, which we did do. But Orrin Hatch was not part of anything Ted Kennedy tried to do on this 15 years ago, and nothing that he tried to do this year. Same thing with John McCain. I don't know why they said that. They know that they didn't at any moment engage in real negotiations with Senator Kennedy this year. It's uh, it's. Flack, I think they call it when the submariners use it, and it's, uh, it, it's it's also tasteless. But you know, if you want to invoke Senator Kennedy and, and live up to his standards, then you know, act like a senator. Uh, Lawrence O'Donnell of MSNBC and Huffington Post, as always, great thanks, Lawrence.